What's up guys, John Burt III here. Today we're gonna to talk about my go-to bladed jig setup. We're gonna start off with the rod first. The rod that I have um, in my arsenal that I use for throwing a bladed jig is the Team Lose Signature Series rod. This is the Andy Montgomery bladed jig slash Thunder Cricket rod. Now, this is my favorite rod to throw a bladed jig on. And here are my reasons why. Number one, it's seven foot three. So I like a slightly longer rod when I'm throwing a bladed jig. Whenever I'm making those long casts, a longer rod tends to help you to be able to reel in the slack and also set the hook when you're making a very long bomb cast. Now this rod is a medium heavy, so it has a medium heavy backbone and it's a fast action. So the tip, it has about 30% tip. So what that means is the tip action on this rod, whenever I want to skip my bait under a dock, lay down cypress tree limb that's really close to the water, this rod allows the bait to load up and then skip under or skip on top of the water to be able to get my bait up under there. But the 70% backbone in this rod also allows me to be able to pull that fish straight up out of that tight cover and get them in the boat. So that's why this rod is my favorite. Um, if you know anything about Andy Montgomery, you know he loves throwing a bladed jig. Once I found out that Luz was coming out with these rods, these signature series rods, um, I had to grab one. When I grabbed one, I was just like, man, this rod is amazing. And I haven't changed. Once I find the right rod for the technique, I don't change it. I leave it right where it's at. Now, the reel. Pro TI. Um, this is the Gen 1. Now, I've had the Gen 1 since 2020. I sold basically three years, and as you can see, if you look at the knobs on this reel, it was purple. Now it's like, great. So I really used this reel a whole, whole lot, and I put it to the paces, and I love this reel. But Luz came out with the Gen 2 model, the Pro TI, and now I have upgraded and, used, and I started using the Gen 2. One thing I like about the Gen 2, just to be completely honest, you can really, really dial this in now. Comparing it to the Gen 1, it's not to say that you can't because you really could, but this here, I can really, really fine tune um, dialing in my bait. And so this is my go-to bladed jig Thunder Cricket reel. It allows me to skip up under any places where I needed to go. I have very minimal backlashes. I like the way the new ergonomics of the frame. The frame is just it's just it's just cool looking like I like the way that it feels. I love the purple accents. The purple accents are amazing on it. And most importantly, like it just comfort in your hand. And anytime you're picking a reel, you always want to make sure that you have a reel that is comfortable in your hand that you can fish with all day. And that's kind of the biggest thing when I go what I go to when I'm looking for a reel. There are certain specs, or so we will talk about that in another video on what I look for in picking the right reel for a technique. And we will talk about that in a later video. But just a couple quick little differences between the reel. If you look at the Gen 1 between the Gen 2, the first thing you see, frame difference. This is not gonna be a big comparison video, but I just wanna show you frame difference here. If you look at the front, you can see that the front is a little bit different here on both of the reels. The knobs on the reel are totally different. Um, but I love the Gen 2. The Gen 2 was a big upgrade, had to have it and having looked back, love this reel. Now, bladed jig. What bladed jig I use? Of course, Thunder Creek, all day long. Now, now if you see, I have two different trailers on here. I have Rage Bug, Blade Mental. When do I use either? Let's start off with the Blade Mental. Now, if I'm just open water, fan casting around, I would use the blade minnow. There's no type of cover, no grass, no anything, just open water kind of going down the bank. There's nothing. In a way, I use a blade minnow. It just looks very, very natural. And you see the color of the blade minnow, Carolina Chrome. It's killer when you live in the Carolinas. Got to throw Carolina Chrome. The color of this blade jig is mouse. But this is the tungsten thunder cricket to a gray. And then you see, if you can see it, there is wire tied skirt. So you don't have to worry about the skirt sliding down. See the, the head of the Thunder Cricket, a lot smaller. That's because it's tungsten. Tungsten is more dense, more compact, same weight, smaller. But I always go with blade minnow when I'm just open water, there's nothing around. Now, 98% of the time, I'm using the Rage Bug. 
and I'm telling you why. So anytime I'm fishing really close quarters, cypress trees, laydowns, stumps, um, docks, anything, I always go with the rage boat. Why? If this is a laydown and I cast past the laydown, the rage bug comes straight over that laydown. But if I was using the blade minnow or any type paddle tail minnow style trailer, you come, come over here, it rolls. And guess what? I'm hung now. So that's why 98% of the time, because the way I like to fish, I like to fish shallow and I like to get dirt. Like I always go with a rage bug because guess what? It's not going to roll. It's not going to roll because of the flat surface on the rage book. It's flat. And I leave all the appendages on there and they just cause extra kicking and stuff like that. And that's pretty much why I use the rage book because I don't have to worry about it rolling. It comes over laydowns. It comes over dock poles, anything. That's why I use the rage book. So in closing of this video, what I want you to understand is anytime you're picking the right setup, you always want to start with your rod. Once you got the right rod, you find the right reel, you find the bait that you like. But one thing I don't want you to forget is line. Now, line size that I tend to use, 17 pound fluorocarbon, I use Strike King Contra. It's very strong, it's tough, and I don't have an issue with it. I don't go up to 20 and I don't drop down to 15. I feel like 17 is the perfect medium for um, the right line size for when you're fishing a bladed jig. Um, I don't have any issues with it. And like I said, it's easy for me to manage. And anytime, I always check my line. You always check your line anytime you're fishing somewhere shallow, any type of um, hard cover, anything that can fray your line, you always check your line, line management. One of the things that Andy Montgomery always says, he tells his nephew this, is make sure you control the controllables. People wanna blame the line whenever you have um, a break off or whatever. Well, controlling the controllables means when you're fishing that tight cover like that, check your line. Come on guys, check your line. That is very important. So what we're going to do, and as this video series continues to build, we're gonna talk about my favorite setups that I use for every different techniques. My channel is gonna be geared towards more so the rods and reels and the why I pick these rods and these reels to pair them for that technique. Because me personally, I believe that having the right rod and reel allows you to be able to fish not only effectively and comfortably but it also helps you to be able to get more fish in the boat so that you can have a great tournament or just a simply a great day on the water so if you like this type of content like share this with somebody that's getting into fishing whether it be bass fishing or just fishing in general and subscribe to the channel i'm jb3 and i'll catch you later